Hello and welcome to the Overly Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. We talk everything animation here, including Hey Arnold, the Jungle Movie, which we'll be getting into right now. I'm Sam Quattro, and today I'm joined by Mel Moyer. Hello. Michelle Ander. Hey. And John McKenna. Hi, everybody. So, after 15 years of waiting, plotting, etc., it's finally here. The Jungle Movie. Yeah. <laughs> kind of came, yeah. came out of nowhere. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, All I of think a sudden, uh, there was a trailer. <laughs> Yeah, it was, like, announced, I think, officially at Comic-Con this past year, or maybe the year before. Uh, and, yeah, after a long time, it's here. So, the full disclosure on, like, how that all works. Um, after the Hey Arnold movie that came out in theaters in 2002, uh, the Jungle movie was supposed to be this, like, you know, grand finale, continuation, whatever, mm-hmm. of the series. And through contract disputes... Uh, the flop of the hair on the movie, it just didn't happen. But, you know, through the cycle of 90s nostalgia, here we are. <laughs> I like it. You once sent me a list of all the known Jungle Movie fanfics. There's a <laughs> lot. The fans uh, had been pushing for this for like a because decade. I, I was signed, I don't know how many particularly, I was feeling particularly um, unfulfilled with uh, the <laughs> lack of closure. So you sent me the Wikipedia, like a like a Hey Arnold wiki page to all the known wow. movie fanfics. So I don't remember was... doing this, but I'm pretty sure I did, knowing it sounds like you, doesn't it? How much fanfiction I read, because it did happen. <laughs> so I don't know. That's you know background, whatever. Let's just get into it. Get into how we feel, what the opinions are. Yeah, Mel, how do you feel about that? <laughs> Um, I just thought it was a ton of fun because it's one of those things that looking at it now, I want to pick it apart. Like, and a lot of it is stuff that was in your outline, but there's bits and pieces where you're like, really? Or like, you know, like come now, but it was just like a lot of fun. Like, you know, there was a ton of callbacks to, to, uh, random little bits from the show. Um, obviously that entire montage with, um, the video was just an excuse to to like have a nostalgia fest with episodes of the show and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was total fan fiction. Like that's what was great. Like it was total fan fiction at the end. Um, so I just enjoyed it. I I had I had fun watching it, and I think you know that's all that really matters at the end of the day. That's a good point. I didn't really think about the whole like oh it's fan it's kind of like fan fiction at the end, but I can mm-hmm. definitely I feel that. Uh, Michelle, what do you think? I, I agree a lot with Mel. I think this movie was really, it was just like a joy to watch and it definitely, all the major things I hoped would happen happened. And there was, a, I don't know, there, there were a lot of things that kind of like made me happy that felt earned. Like I know Craig Bartlett had talked a lot about how like the, the last season towards the end, like Arnold kind of knew Helga liked him and that becomes like very obvious at the beginning of this movie. And I liked that bit of continuity. And I don't know, I liked that, like, Phoebe got a bigger part. <laughs> and I love, which is awesome. It's like, yeah, she's, like, tearing apart the phone. Go her. This is so good. She'd be so into this. And just, like, you, updating technology that way was really great, too. Because, yeah, the joke about the beepers being totally useless now is, is real. I thought sometimes I get <laughs> mad when people try to tie in, like, all the characters to be like, hey, I remember this guy, but it felt really, like, fine here. And I ended up liking it a lot, and I was happy to see all the, even, like, the very, like, small characters, like, freaking Curly. Like, I actually thought he was kind (laughs) of great, even though he's totally insane. Um, So, like, all in all, I thought this was a really good movie. I had a lot of fun watching it. Oh, Curly. Curly's always great. He's so much. Curly. I mean, it's always great, but, like, uh, just, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm over it. Listen, everyone yeah. has their least favorite background Hey Arnold character. That is so true. Oh, <laughs> uh, God. Buzzfeed what quiz coming think? through. I don't know if I have mine, actually. I don't mind. It's not, oh, I, Your I least think. favorite? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out who mine was. I'm not a huge fan of Monkey Man. I honestly find him pretty annoying. He's wow, like kind of overhyped in this movie. I was like, I'd rather hang out with like the pigeon guy than Monkey Man. He played, yeah, he played a much bigger role than I thought he was. Yeah, <laughs> that was suppressing. I like seeing Stoop Kid though. Oh yeah, Stoop Kid. Yeah. Anyway, John, he's, up, he's still off the stoop. Woohoo! <laughs> he gets to people feel? on and off the stoop. I'm sorry, Sam. What? 
How did you feel about the movie, John? Uh, well, first <laughs> off, everything is filtered through the fact I'm just eternally grateful that it actually came back. I was so, <laughs> I was just so happy that it was being made. Um, and you know what? It was, it was just a big ball of fun to watch. It felt like a good Hey Arnold episode. They didn't really sort of, I don't want to say dumb it down. They didn't sort of modern nickify it, which is good. It still had that 90s feel build. It still had that 90s kitchen it, barring a few, uh, modern touches in their technology. But, and you know, it, there were some flaws in it, definitely, but it was a very, I mean, the end, it was very emotional. The ending had, was great. And it, it just, and when I stopped watching it after, I saw, I loved all the little bits. I liked seeing Lockjaw. I don't know how he came back from the sea, but, uh, yeah, he swam <laughs> back for the occasion. Um, I mean, yeah, there were some flaws in it, but when I look back on it and I, it's, it's this perfect ending to a show that desperately needed an ending because it so deserved it. So just thanks. I'm just thankful it's back and I enjoyed it. Yeah, I definitely feel that. Honestly, I'm, I don't want to say I'm disappointed. I'm more just like, I kind of don't feel satisfied by the ending that we got. Again, like, as Mel said, it's kind of fanficy. It's kind of like, oh, here's Arnold's parents and forever living happily ever after the end. And I don't know. I kind of felt, I kind of felt like it didn't really fit the tone of, you know, the original series, which, you know, obviously it's been like, what, 15 years mm-hmm. since well, they wrapped production, so it isn't. Well, but, the thing uh, was is that it, I'm not so sure how fan it is, though, because when Craig Barlett was always interviewed, like, it really did seem like he was going to keep the parents alive in whatever draft that came out of it, so. Yeah, true, and then, like, yeah. reading, uh, like, the previous drafts, or, like, what we know of the previous drafts anyway, the plot pretty much stayed the same. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, apart from like any knowledge that we had of his parents, but I don't know. Personally, I liked the ambiguity involving his parents. Like, were they yeah. dead? Were they alive? But no, One they thing... were just like in a coma for nine years. One that... thing I also yeah. liked the in terms of ambiguity of the original ending was that like there was really no answer to like the Helga and Arnold thing because mm-hmm. he like had like no reaction to it, and I thought that was just so very like like a natural normal reaction considering like her relationship with him from you know his perspective i mean obviously everyone was like secretly hoping oh like maybe one day and it happened here but like i liked that in the hey arnold movie when she had that big dramatic like confession oh, he like yeah. didn't really react to it at all oh, so like, much we gotta do, we gotta do well, stuff he, well he yeah. did react he was just like overwhelmed yeah by it all. But um, Which is yeah, but that was the thing. Like we never bring it up after that. It. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, whatever. That was weird. And then like that was it. And I lo- I weirdly I love that. <laughs> it's because I it's thought a- that was just so typical of like how that would go, especially for after how long age. it had been going on. Yeah, yeah, that too. It's like we don't want to deal with this right now. Maybe like in three or four more years. Yeah. But it's also like when Helga confessed again in this movie. It I think it was almost the show Craig Bartlett's way of basically telling us like. Whatever happened to Harold the movie, it's not canon. Put it out of your mind and put it away forever. Like that, that really seemed to get the gist of it. Like, like it's like we're almost putting what her confession in the movie that made it to the film, that made it on film. Like that's not canon. We shouldn't even consider that. I like whether like I like just for me the way that went. I really enjoyed that. Like mm. I just thought that was like a great choice to have him have like no real follow up to that whole situation. Because mm-hmm. it's like you get the catharsis of it. Like she has this massive um, <laughs> monologue, uh, you, monologue, and it's ridiculous. And you're like, oh god, but it's happening. <laughs> and then after it's over, it's like nobody talks about it because they're just kind of like, yeah, that was really weird. It was the um, heat of the moment. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what and, they say about it, right? At the end. Yeah, of the movie. I, I, yeah. I actually watched it like the other day, and that's literally what they said. Yeah. Like, like <laughs> I just loved that choice. Like I thought that was such like a bold choice to do for a children's show where you had this pining female character, where in anything else, like they would have gotten together in some fashion. Um, to just have it be very typical, like someone confesses and someone else doesn't really know how to take it or deal with it, so they just ignore that it happened. Like, how many times in your middle school, high school, elementary school, whatever life, like, has that happened to you or someone you know? Like, I just thought it was very good. Not that I didn't like the way it ended up here, but that was one thing I didn't hate about that movie. Mm -hmm. 
it's well the, the, th- the reason why people didn't like it is because it just reset back to what it, what it was when the movie ended and the show resumed and people were like mm-hmm. well then what, what was the point of that then how good to have a well, little, that's little life. more catharsis what the point of <laughs> that's life <laughs> <laughs> there you go and does does anyone exemplify that more than how <laughs> Yeah, That's pretty a much. Good point. <laughs> oh, I don't know. That was just yeah. I understand though why people like weren't satisfied with that, and you know, it's one of those things. I don't know. Where it's the resolved rest of here, so it's neither here nor there. Were the rest of y'all feeling the Helga Arnold in this movie, Michelle? Wait, say that again. Were you feeling like the Helga slash Arnold in this movie? <sighs> I mean, I was, but I will say, as someone who's, like, loved Helga in the series, part of, like, halfway through, when she, like, spies Arnold through the wall and, like, just stops being mad because she feels bad for him again, I'm just like, Helga, you know, you're really awesome. You could have motivations to get everyone out of here because you're just a badass. You don't, it doesn't have to be because you love Arnold. And I was kind of having that feeling a little bit, but I still, like, I'm Helga, ride or die, so I, I, I was fine that they had the nice smooch and that you know things were finally that they had an actual conversation which they didn't last time so i mean progress there i i felt good about it and i will say at the at the very end of the movie when he tries to like hold her hand she's like what are you doing go away like that made me kind of happy because like yeah like the relationship wouldn't just change overnight like that's still gonna take time so that felt pretty realistic considering what their entire dynamic has been leading up to this point too Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, uh, yeah, I, I can see that. Like, this actually definitely was more of a two-way thing. I'm still not a fan of her like brushing him off well, on the first day of school, but it's also like I think at that point it's like he knows it, she knows, they he both knows, she know. knows, he knows, he, she knows, yeah. he knows. It's like, yeah, it's like it's on. They're they're like you can tell they're friends. That maybe not in a relationship, but the other friends. Helga has a larger problem with vulnerability that I feel yeah. like. Yeah. <laughs> That, that's probably part of her. it too. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, I. Well, that's why she's I, a bully. I liked it. Yeah. No, mm-hmm. and I, I, there's a lot of stuff about Helga that is a lot more complex. Than, oh yeah, and the movie I definitely originally realized, um, which yeah. is in Sam's outline, I guess. Yeah. But we can talk mm-hmm. about it now if you want. Yeah. Sure. Totally. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So like, Helga's home life is like awful. Um. Like, her mom, like, there was that whole article a while back that was basically like, um, her mom's an alcoholic. Mm-hmm. Um, she lives in a neglectful household. Like, and all the, and you see that, like, they when they're like, fun oh, of it. crap, like, SOS, like, we need to go save Olga. <laughs> oh, yeah, the <laughs> other one, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you know, and it sucks. So it's like, you know, she manifests her, herself through bullying, and, and she does that thing that everyone has, like, done in some fashion where you try to, like, put, you know, maybe you, you weren't a bully yourself, but you try to put push off like feelings or avoid it by being like, oh, no, I hate that guy. Um, so you know, I, I was okay at the end when she, you know, slapped his hand away because yeah. like he was okay with it. Cause he gets it, you know, it's yeah, like, it's not it. like everything is going to suddenly change between them. And, uh, you know, they're, they like said, they're probably not in any sort of relationship, but um, I thought that was very natural because for me, the biggest thing with Helga and Arnold is believing that, Arnold would return her feelings because for him, this has been one thing. And for her and the audience, it's obviously something entirely different. Um, and like all throughout everything, he's really never shown, you know, any inkling towards, um, you know, sharing her feelings. And obviously she's super ride or die, um, for Arnold. Um, so yeah, like I liked that bit where it's like he goes to hold her hand, she slaps it away. He's like, you know what, cool, and then like you know walks after her, and they're kind of like paired off the way they are. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah, he would. He def. We we definitely know it was one sided. I mean, yeah, he was. I mean, there was that one episode where he has the dream about being married to Helga, and it's like, and and, 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 <laughs> so and he talks afraid. to Gerald. It's like he talks to Gerald about, it, and he's like, you know, actually, it wasn't. It's not that bad. It wasn't that bad. Like it could live with. I was like, Sigmund Freud would have a field day with this episode but other than but yeah it was uh but yeah it's like i feel like he definitely likes her enough like he does consider her a friend but it's like it, it would have it's it happened way too fast for there to be a legitimate romantic interest that that could work in the story mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah i don't know i honestly i'm on the side that arnold or at least I didn't feel like Arnold really had a lot of feelings for her. I mean, I think that, like, 
throughout the series, they begin to understand each other. At least he began to understand her. But in terms of like it being like a ship, I don't know. Listen, I'm it's more... no Cindy or Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. I'm more about just like you know that was two sided just... at least. Yeah. I'm more about Helga just, you know, feeling her feelings and just being Helga. And, you know, Arnold is, like, her, I don't know, like, example of, like, a good person. And, like, why wouldn't she, like, feel a lot of feelings about that? Mm -hmm. That being said, I don't know if, like, collecting, like, security camera footage. (laughs) That (laughs) That wasn't security (laughs) camera footage. She took that footage. All right, whatever. (laughs) She was the security camera. (laughs) I think that kind of, like, you know, there, there's one thing to have, like, a shrine of, like, the, your crush. There's another thing to have, like, a whole room full of, like, footage of them. Like, that's just sort of going across the line of, and maybe you should... Like, to- this this crosses the line. Well, and that was always her shtick, was, like... Yeah, that's across that the line. That the whole line. situation totally crossed the line. Like, she carried a, a picture of him in, like, her shirt, like, on her person every day, and... She, like, cuts off his hair collect- and keeps yeah, it. Yeah, she cut off and gets gum of him. Yeah, she, she gets, like, gum that, that he spit out one day, mm-hmm. and now, apparently, she's got, you know, a, a freaking, like, um, control center... In her she closet, up, she upgraded. that she uses to to archive, and Phoebe like knows what footage knows. is what apparently. Um. Well, so yeah, like the whole it. shtick crosses a major line, and it's like on the one hand, it's like okay, what is this telling people? Because she bullies him and she stalks him. <laughs> like that's like not a great combination. But well, I it, mean, it, well, we knew she stalks him, we knew she bullies him, but yeah, you're right. The room was. The the one thing the show did so well is that how there weren't really any really out there storylines or plots or anything like that. It was all very still realistic. So the fact that there's this underground control room of videotapes she took of him is just like, uh, yeah, no, sorry, this doesn't work. Well, and it's like so over the top that you're like, you want to almost ignore that there's something problematic about it because you're like, this would never mm-hmm. happen. But then right. at the same time, you're like, well, I don't know. Some of it is kind of realistic. <laughs> Like and, the shrine in the closet is kind of yeah. a thing, and it's and it's over the top for a show that if it had one defining characteristic, it was never over the top. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I, def- I definitely feel that. I felt like it was way too like overstated for this. Like maybe it was another show where like more zany things happen. But Hey Arnold was always such like a grounded yeah. show, and to have this, well, then again, the whole movie's sort of like you know a little bit zany, but yeah, eh, whatever. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, no, I get it. Like, and I was thinking that too. By the time at the end that they were like in the temple and stuff, I was like, this seems really That's strange. A lot. <laughs> oh. This is a lot happening for a show that normally takes place on the streets of New York slash Chicago, where they're like transforming vacant lots into baseball fields yeah. and like and like they get stuck in school once because there was a flood and like the, a subway breaks down. Like these are the stories. Is like things that happen in a city. And then all of a sudden, like, this big elaborate thing of, you know, we have to go Indiana Jones rescue his parents from and they, Central America. And they went James America, Bond in the first movie. And, yeah, and get get attacked by river pirates in, in Central America who kidnap <laughs> children, apparently. Yeah. Like, this stuff, I don't know. It was, the whole thing was over the top. So it's like, I guess you have to, you know, you have to think to yourself, wow, that was over the top and ridiculous. And decide, like, okay, do I accept that the whole thing was ridiculous and just take it as an entity that was what it was? Like, just know that mm-hmm. this is this is the baseline for the movie is that it's going to be ridiculous, you know? I think, but, we, I think we I think we knew enough about like where this show was going to go and through the episodes where this look well, San Lorenzo and the Green Eye people were mentioned, it was going to be somewhat over the top anyway. So I think we had no choice but to accept it. It just kept going and going. I mean, I guess it was, it was it. set up in the journal, which was, you know, the last episode of the series. Like, oh, I found the map. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah, and, blah. You know, the whole, like, adventuring and the green-eyed people. And to actually see them was cool. And, like, you know, see, like, what's up. You know, this whole mystery thing. But it's just, it feels too much for... It is too much, TM. For, like, mm. the whole, like, uh, hey, Arnold, like, aesthetic TM, right? Yeah, right. but then again, I don't know. It's it it's been planned. It was gonna happen. Yeah, it happened. So who am I to like be like? Oh, this is too, bah, this is too like too much. With Craig Bartlett, Bartlett's like no, it's my show. 
chill. It, it was fine. I mean, it was still fine. I mean, it was still enjoyable. Yeah, yeah, I totally yeah. agree. I'm just saying, like, uh, I don't know, dude. Like, for example, <laughs> you know, just walking into this like, PlayStation 2 rendered. Uh, that was oh, distracting. Yeah. That was oh, bad. yeah. That was I was bad. thinking to myself, Sam was going to hate that. Oh, just I going that around and around in that. Peak. Oh, yeah, that just did not look good. For a second, I was like, did we just go into an alternate dimension? Like, is that what this is supposed <laughs> to be? Like, That would be even more over the top. Was it like a hidden, like, world in plain sight? Like, I don't, you know, I, I wasn't sure. And then I was like, oh, so it's like El Dorado then. I you guess. know, yeah. you didn't even need it. You could have just had one nice, good, clean still frame of that location, and it yeah. would have been perfect. I think so. I just got a little uh, uppity with the uh, 3D effects budget. They were like, oh, all the cartoons got to be 3D. We got to include it, guys. I'm, I'm straight from 2003. Hmm. And they'll, I mean, they 3D'd the boat at some points, and that looked fine, but that city just, I don't know, on its own was just, well, like, that- a lot. Yeah, well, the the boat the boat scene kind of remind me of that episode. Uh, what is the last one out of Beach City where they do that to the the mm-hmm. the, van, the Pearl's van? It looks yeah. like the Pearl's van, and it looks fine because it's a motion shot and yeah. it's coming to you, so it it works better. Just when it's just like a three sixty degree landscape, it just feels fake. Hmm. How did you guys feel about like the general style of the movie? Like you know the new character designs, setting, just all that like aesthetic stuff. I thought it looked good. I mean, it seemed very in keeping with the old... I mean, it was updated, but not to a point where it felt distracting, I would say. Yeah, Yeah, I definitely feel that. I feel like, you know, that's sort of like the style, the really, like, cleaned up sort of flash looking. But Well, the thing I found interesting about that is, like you said, it's cleaned up. There's more, you know, it's kind of more like HD animation um, with some more details and shading and that sort of thing. But Helga's picture was still from, like, yeah, Yeah, yeah. Dude, that was, like... <laughs> it, that, so I think good. that was a nice little, nice little throwback. Yeah. It was the picture of Arnold that didn't have a mouth. And, like, his <laughs> head he just was looks so, so much tired. Longer. Yeah. Like, oh, he looks like he's high or something. <laughs> um, <laughs> he Arnold. That's how we always yeah. look at season one, though. He always looked, like, looked tired. Yeah, yeah, I did. He's dangerous. The, it's lot. interesting though that the, with the updated animation, the person I noticed it the most on was Mr. Simmons, mm-hmm. like because it, they gave him like more details on his nose, and for yeah, some reason that stood that out nose, to me. Yes, I agree. That nose yeah. stood out. Oh, so I was like, oh, okay, so we've we've changed some things up here. Um, but then it was you know interesting because so many people looked so much the same as what they did before that it was like. It didn't really phase me all that much. Yeah. Some of the yeah. kids have facial hair now. Brainy has like a little dirt stash. Yeah. Why? Why? Yeah, I don't he's supposed know. To be not, he's supposed to be ten. I think they're supposed to be a dirt- year older, right? Like, I love when Nickelodeon makes ten year olds like teenagers, like they did in um, All Grown Up. They were oh, ten God. years old, but like oh, dealing with awful. teenager problems. <laughs> yes, it's, in middle yeah, school. That's, that's, it's the right age, I guess. Um, well, it's close. What was I gonna say? But it's um, but no, it's like yeah, the changes were subtle. They weren't too, they weren't too bad, and I thought it actually worked well. The only, I, I thought the aesthetic still was very classic. It, it's the city we all remember. It, the city we all remember. The animation was very good. It had those nice, and that still had that great color palette. Uh, it was updated, but it still kept the colors. The only problem I have. Why was there? Why does Rhonda have a smartphone? Why is there Wi-Fi? Okay, yes, that is what I wanted to, <laughs> to bring up because fine. it did this thing where it tried to pretend that I didn't remember that this show took place in like 1997. Like, no, it, 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 showing it to an entire audience that knows exactly yeah. when this show took place. It's like one thing to take, like, because you know, like, you've got like. Wonder Woman today is obviously not set in like the 70s or anything like where it was normally set. It's like, okay, we accept that this version of the story is taking place in, in 2017, right? Yeah. This is different because it's like, this is a continuation of the same story that took place in 1997, but we're all pretending it's somehow like the same, like, like, look. Like, no. suddenly, okay, well, like, we're retconning everything. Okay, it actually took place, like, more recently. Because it's now the there's Wi-Fi, phone. and everyone knows about it. Hmm. And there's cell phones, and everybody knows about it. And the only person who seems weird about this, and kind of, like, in the time capsule of when this show originally took place, is Bob, 
who's still trying right. to sell beepers, which haven't but, been used since like 1999, probably. But the issue, well, the issue for me wasn't so much the cell phones, because actually in the show, Big Bob's Beepers does sell cell phones. So it's not like he was totally out of it even back then. But it just, for me, it's like you didn't need that. I mean, the show wasn't really too 90s. It didn't hit you over the head with its contemporary time period. There was no, it was not necessary to have those things in the, uh, in the show. I mean, yeah, they did send out an SOS signal by jacking open Rhonda's smartphone, getting a super powerful Wi-Fi signal and all that. But that could have easily just been a modern cell phone that Phoebe does the same thing to. Or, you know, like a 2002 era cell phone, which was, you know, small and portable. Well, they like, also, what they needed was the Wi-Fi and that really didn't exist until. Yeah. I'm like, very oh, recently. It was too, for me, it was just so sick of the plot. <laughs> it, it was dark. Like, it, it, could have, it could have left it in 2002. Like, the audience would not care. Yeah. I mean, the thing for me is just like the inconsistency, right? So it's like, what is the truth? When does this take place? If, if there was beepers at one point and people had brick cell phones, why do they suddenly have smartphones if this is meant to be like a couple months later or something? Well, they, well, they didn't have brick cell phones. Well, by the time the show ended in 2002, the cell phones were definitely sleeker. They were becoming more mainstream. They just, they weren't bricks by that point. Is what well, bricks by the standard that we would know today, like they would be, right? Like these Nokia phones that were very square and that sort of thing. Like, well, that's it's like, like the aesthetic I'm thinking of. But it's yeah. like, my point here is just, it's like, okay, we didn't have Wi-Fi then though. Like that wasn't a thing. That right you had yeah. regularly available, so it's like, what is the what is what is the truth? You know, like, what does this take place in 2017, or does it play place at the in the early 2000s? Like, it's one of those things, right? That I just yeah. like have trouble wrapping my mind around. I don't. Know. I think they just like wanted to update it to right now because who because knows what we live are. right now? Yeah, yeah we just, live right now. They explained but in the show what a point. beeper was, which they never did in the original show. <laughs> A, yeah, a device was. that is meant to tell you to call someone. Yeah, the kids need reason, to know what beepers are. For some reason, well, I that, thought we call that a sell Texas cars. Texas. But yeah, he sells Well, and you know, it's interesting because it's like, we do know what beepers were. Like, we, you know, my mom had a beeper, like, on Friends, like we said, they, we said this before the episode, but they had beepers too. Like, I remember beepers being a thing, and now it's like, obviously, yes, I have an iPhone. So it's like, I understand both these things. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I can like, comment on how funny it is that Bob is still selling beepers. <laughs> yeah, which is, which means he's basically, you know, going to drive a stale into the ground if he still thinks beepers yeah. are whole. I don't think he's he can a very buy stubborn now. person. I, like, I don't know any outlet that would sell a beeper, like, probably on eBay or Amazon, but like, you can't like doctors and, and be like, like, I want a beeper. Doctors and firemen and stuff still use beepers or pagers, whatever you want to call them. Why? Ah, because they just need to be beeped. Beeped. I mean, like the the vibrate function of your phone works just as well. Do 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 do. Uh, yeah, but I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So technology. But yeah, aside from that, you know, aside from me trying to figure out how Lockjaw swam back into the sea, swam back from the sea, uh, it, it, aesthetic was aesthetic was good. I liked it, and it kept the good, it kept that cool sort of '90s city vibe regardless, which is why I loved the show to begin with. <clears throat> yeah, apparently, like, there's a bunch of hipsters, kip, eh, hipster cafes and whatever in that's, the background, if you look yeah. closely. I personally oh, didn't. But that's yeah, I didn't there. You personally didn't, but you still know I personally there. did not look for the fair trade coffee houses. <laughs> yeah, Craig Farmer said they were in there. That, but that's, you know what, that's fine. In the late 90s, early 2000s, they, they were popping up. I was fine with it. Uh, gentrification, man. It's a thing. Well, Wouldn't the whole that thing, not be gentrification, though? The hope is that it's small know. business hipster coffee shops. Well, they all kind of are, except for Starbucks. No. But it's like, but no, it's like, actually, it was, but you know, it's like, in, at that point when Harold was made, the cities were, the cities were cleaner, they were, they were cleaner, there was, crime was going down, and people were starting to move into them, so there was that early stage of gentrification going on, before, obviously not to modern day proportions, but it was at least starting, so it does fit. Hmm. I think I this is probably a topic did. for the first Hey Arnold movie. Yeah. <laughs> We're in the yeah. jungle. Oh, We're in the I've jungle got, yeah. Oh my god. We're I got in Central so many, America. I could look at that first movie in such an urbanist lens. Speaking of gentrification. Jesus Christ. Ah, uh, boy. Okay, so I think the biggest thing here that we haven't, like, super touched on is Arnold's parents. Here yeah. they are. Yeah. They're alone. Here they are. I mean, yeah. obviously, like, we've seen them before, but, you know... They're here. Sleeping beauties. 
how do y'all feel about you know the outcome of the of you know the parents the whole like <clears throat> excuse me the whole green eyed people thing the sleeping sickness this like I don't know children of the corn not yeah, really right the also, nice yeah. children of the corn how are they not asleep. I don't know. I think it yeah. affects people of a certain age, maybe. Yeah, they said it was adults, but they didn't really expound like, upon that or leave room for me to know, right? ask my questions. Why did they make all them little, like, house enclosures that could be opened when the thing was summoned? And also, I guess, oh, it's just so many things. Like, Sam, one of your notes was like, how did they keep them alive? Did they have feeding tubes? And yeah, how did they eat? Yeah, I mean, well, they, they were, like, they essentially in a coma for ten years. Yeah. Yeah, you'd have to, like, hydrate them and, and nourish them. <laughs> I don't know. Just, like, you know, whatever the plot says so, let it be so. Oh, so I love that they were aged, like, they aged in their sleep. Like, obviously yeah. that would happen if somebody was in a coma, but it's, like, me thinking about it, like, abstractly is kind of funny. And then seeing, like, them having their streaks of gray hair while yeah, sleeping that's there. Like, right? <laughs> the only thing no, that like, oh, seemed that's weird. about them, though, right? Like, they're, they, their physical attributes seem fine, except they had, like, these stress streaks in their hair, and that was what <laughs> yeah. made them look older. I guess that's how they render gray hair, or, like, a sprinkling of gray hair in this animation. Big old just giving them, <laughs> like, Danny Phantom streaks. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. He yeah. got that skunk stripe in that one episode. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. They were, they were, listen, I honestly, like, yes, obviously we all want to know what happened to his parents and yada yada, but it was like, again, like, I liked the ambiguity of it. I didn't have mm-hmm. to see them. Like, I liked it. Would, it's like, okay, I'd like the idea. It's like, okay, like, maybe they're alive out there somewhere, or we have confirmation that they're alive, and, and that's cool. Like, I, I always liked, um, you know, not because it was like I didn't need to know. Like I liked the way like his his life was set up the way it is. Like he was living with his grandparents in their weird boarding house, um, and that was it, that was fine with me. Um, so I don't know. I I didn't you know I didn't hate it. I just thought you know there's probably a reason they saved it until the last five seconds of the movie because yeah, you know once it happened it was like oh yeah that's what we've all been waiting for. But there's not, I think Mel's right in that there isn't a lot of meat there. We don't really know them as characters, and I mean... Well, we kind of do. Well, we know what was in the journal. We know what people have said. We know, like, his, maybe his baby memories from when they left, but they don't, we don't really know them as character characters. I love his grandma. I love his grandpa. I love all the boarders. Those are characters that I know and love. Like, his parents Mm -hmm. are, like, ideas that, you know. Exactly. That the movie and other stuff, you know, sells to you, and, you know, you want to care as much as Arnold, but you don't. Um, (laughs) Well. Well, you so. care about him. You care. I mean, I cared about him finding his parents because you care about Arnold's. Like, right. and it's like you. It's almost like you wanted. That's kind of why I think the Jungle movie was. Everyone really wanted to see this because it's. It's a. Well, a. It finishes the show, but b. Also, you want to see how Arnold gets that closure. Like, how does he deal with seeing his parents again? And I thought. No, I thought the what they could have done was. The parents were dead. I thought they were going to be dead when he. I would have preferred that. I yeah, yeah. Too, but <laughs> what he <laughs> well, already he has. Well, when Eduardo phrased this, I will take you to where your parents lie. And I thought there was going to be like, I thought when I saw like the gray streak, was it was like, like, sick, they're dead. It was like, it was like, <laughs> I thought oh, it was a Mel. crypt. I thought they had built a crypt for him, which, which would have been, okay, it would have been very sad. It was a very emotional few minutes of the uh, movie, but it would have, it would have been sad, but it also would have been, he know he now knows that they died saving yeah. these people. But the fact they're still alive, you know what? So be it. I guess that's, even though this sh- this movie had a ridiculously high body count for a Nick movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. I guess, I guess this was just maybe... Oh, yeah, spot. there was that dude who got <laughs> shot by a bunch of arrows. Dudes. Let's talk and about the, that guy. The guy that fell through the fake floor, all the guys that got crushed, and they gave right. them groany sounds, so you'd know they weren't really dead, but they were probably dead. Uh, like, they were all dead. Yeah, they're dead. They're dead. You know, a lot of people died in this movie. The, and in fact, Lasama La- <laughs> like La- La- got a face. knife to... The- Osama yeah. had a knife to the back, a poison dart to the forehead, and he fell off a cliff. Yeah. Just... <sighs> well, it all started when the the Central American river pirates kidnapped the children. I think that's that's where this sort of <laughs> this theme started. Um, yeah, that was that was that was a thing that would not have flown on 
on Nickelodeon. None of that would have flown. There was a guy, he had arrows sticking out of his stomach. Like, you could see that he was full of arrows. And that guy just used him as a body shield and was like, eh, whatever. Drops him. Well, it's like, yeah, but going back to the the point at hand, though, it's like, yeah, like, I would have preferred, honestly, his parents to have been dead because it's like, it's not seeing them that matters and it's Mm -hmm. not talking to them. It's knowing, right? Like, it's the unknown. So it's like, if you just told me this is what happened or this is where they are, I'd be like, great, cool, solid. And like, Arnold would probably be the same way. I mean, yes, like, obviously, you would want to, you know, someone in his position or just even you know not even that like arnold himself just wants to know his parents like right or he wants to to know something about them which is fine but from the audience's point of view you care only so much as it's like oh like i want him to achieve his goal and i want this movie to achieve the goal that it established in the first 15 minutes but that goal could easily just be like yo your parents died here they are like i think yeah I agree with that. I also think another way they could have handled it was, like, when he goes to their enclosure, if we just, like, seen him go in and known that he'd had a conversation, that would have been enough for me. I didn't necessarily need to know what it was, and I think the mystery of not knowing could have actually made it a little more satisfying. Just knowing that he got it. Yeah. Uh, I I didn't need to see them. Yeah. (laughs) I would have, honestly, I would have lost it if, like, we didn't see that. (laughs) What? Yeah, oh, like, there'd be a lot of fans for that way. years and I still don't know! <laughs> Listen, do you all watch Twin yeah. Peaks? You need to get okay oh. with disappointment new, here. New, new one oh. of the old stuff. <laughs> Either of them. I, I, I need to. I've seen, all like, right, five y'all. episodes. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's just... Yeah, the yeah, parents. It's like, the skunk like, striped parents. It was like, it really <laughs> did seem like the odds odds on bet was that they were going to be alive anyway. So I was like, you know what, they're going to be alive. But I thought well, it was like that nice one moment you thought they were going to be dead. So my other thing with them at the very end, like, they also, because they talked about how this is going to be like, they either, they're like, okay, you could either view it as the end of the series or they have, you know, their possibility of starting a new season. This would be like the jumping off point to like re- rebooting the show and it's like i could easily see first issue arising is that his parents are like super needy <laughs> well, <laughs> they they yeah it makes him sense school. yeah no i did it did and but i noticed that like right at the end that like little moment where he's like all right you can wait here now like i was like all right there's our first conflict for the new show if it ever happens yeah like it's just like yeah. these grown adults so know that you can't come into school with them like duh but these I are grown adults been... that haven't seen their son for 10 That's years. That's the thing. Yeah, they so, know, they know the rules. They just kind of, well, he yeah. still, it's against the law to not be, I mean, they could teach him homeschool, he but could, he has lots of friends and stuff. He could so. also, like, call in sick. Like, just take a personal day. I think he spent, the like, the whole summer with them, though, right? So it's been, like, three months or something, so. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. they're being, <laughs> they're being weird. Yeah. Well, you know, they, 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 the first day of school is a big thing for parents, and they didn't have that, so. True. Yeah. Yeah, I just noticed, like, that little thing at the end. I was like, well, that's probably going to play into the possibility of a future continuation of this, is yeah. that they're going to be, like, needy and up his butt, and. I mean, I have him, and then they're gonna have a whole. I definitely noticed it. It's it. Nickelodeon has done this before. Like when they made that special all grown up version Rugrats movie for the tenth anniversary, they didn't they didn't know at the time, but that became I think the highest rated show in in network history, and that led into what? I watched the hell out of all grown up. Yeah, it was it was all right. It was certainly interesting, but like that they had that one off movie. I thought okay, it's gonna be a one off for the fans to see what they look like. The ratings were through the roof. Yeah, and then it was they, technically wow. an episode of Rugrats. It right. Was, yeah. Where they like, had that, a dream that they were older. Yeah, they turned it into a full-length series. So it, there's precedent, and I wouldn't be surprised if someone at, Nick, at Nickelodeon off, head office is you know, trying to see if they could use this as the jump off. Well, like, and no, the, then they've said that. They've said like they're like, this is either going to, you know, we wrapped everything up, but it also could lead into future episodes if it gets enough traction basically mm-hmm. but i think we- there have been official rumblings of there being you know if this is successful it could lead to like a season six from uh you know the horse's mouth himself so you, know, yeah. you never know really? Who knows? that would be very exciting question though is do we want do we want this show to come back like oh, do not know. with the parents no offense to the parents but i don't <laughs> care about them <laughs> I do like that they haven't really disrupted the dynamic of, like, the boarding house itself much. 
Like, the grandma and grandpa are still, like, such Crazy. jams. And all the borders her are still socialist, there. Um, socialist, um... <laughs> oh, I love that. The beginning. Grandma's so good! I'm glad she was just as crazy and, like, amazing in this movie as she always was. Oh, she yeah. was very true to herself. It was very satisfying. Definitely. But, yeah, but it's, I'm, always, I'm always worried, because you know what it is? Whenever they do a revival or a reboot, you are always know it's never going to be as good the second time around. And I would hate to, ha- to have that happen to the show. Well, and I guess it's like one of those things where it's like, okay, you're redoing, like, the, it is the parents, right? Like, you're adding a new element, so there's something that's changed. Like, I look at it with Kim Possible, where mm-hmm. that ended, right? Like, her and Ron got together, and that was meant to be the series finale, but there was so much, like, hype about um, that movie and the ending that they were like, okay, we'll come back for one more, like, mini season. And it was like, okay, you're bringing back the same thing, but the formula had changed because now there was this dynamic of, like, Kim and Rana were together. So there was, like, a there was like an occasion to to redo this and to, to have um, a new story, right? So it's like, mm-hmm. I could see that here, where it's like, okay, we're going back, we're doing it again, but now his parents are here. So it's like, there's there's a, there's a new story to tell, or there's a new dynamic to, to the same stories to tell. So in that regard, like, yeah. Like, I could totally see it, and I would totally say like yes you it is well within your your rights as writers to to tell more of these stories and i will watch them um it just depends on you know execution and if they actually do something concrete with the parents more than their you know three lines in this yeah. in this movie yeah but it's and at the same time though it's like you wonder can can nickelodeon of today do, repeat the, be as successful with Harold as nickelodeon of the 1990s which yeah. i mean and, and i had a ton of fun with this movie if it's any oh true there's oh, a lot yeah. of hype for this oh yeah well we well here's the thing they uh, yeah but there's the thing this was planned for 15 years too like the new season would be you know they probably would have to get diff- there might be different writers maybe craig bartlett stays on but you still have to deal with now that new formula, the new dynamic for a show that never really had a central plot anyway. Yeah. I mean, like, and obviously that's always going to be a thing, right? Like bringing on new writers, bringing on like a new climate to, Mm -hmm. to the production of a TV show. But like looking at just what happened in the movie period, like in terms of like, does that, does that suggest anything further or does it warrant it? I'd say, yeah, why not? Yeah, I'll, I'll still watch it. It's just I'm. It's just I have. Whenever I think of, oh boy, the survival is going to be great. I remember I said that about Teen Titans Go. And I'm and I and <laughs> well, I'm. Because... I never see the differences is that I never said that about Teen Titans. Go. No, I, yeah, I was like, <laughs> it should be Hey Arnold show, right? I was like, Teen Titans is back, and then I watch one episode. Nope. Click. But, well, yeah, I mean, right. so I guess like one way to look at it is like like you said with all grown up, right? Because it's like, you know, they did that, and it was like. For me, that kind of, it, I mean, I don't know. I guess maybe some people are super attached to, to when did Rugrats start? Like 93 or something like that? 91. Like people are, 90s, yeah. 91. Um, people are super attached to like that early Rugrats and it was obviously a much different show than All Grown Up, but I loved All Grown Up and I loved it for very different reasons because obviously it was about very different things than Rugrats and had a very different tone, but it was like, I was totally on board with the new stories, the, the, the older characters, like all of that stuff like that, you know, is very much like not necessarily recapturing lightning in a bottle because Rugrats is like a crazy classic, but like very much like taking like, you know, a piece of that energy and putting it towards a new version of this thing. And it worked really well. You know, it was on the air for like six years. Like it, 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 um, it went till 2008, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, the character did really well. So I trust Nickelodeon's ability to just, you know, if they wanted to, to basically say, okay, we're going to give it a go and see what happens, you know, because in the past, redoing their stuff and, and remolding it has worked out. Obviously, sometimes it hasn't, but, you know. Yeah, and the best part about all grown up, well, I, I know we're still we're still supposed to be talking about the jungle movie, but uh, yeah. yeah, but yeah, it's like, I mean, I would still see it. I think there is room there to expand. I just don't. I just don't know, and I almost kind of, I almost don't know, I don't know if they want to, but I almost don't want to anticipate or wait for that, because I said, I said that about this movie, and I was waiting for a long time. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, like I said earlier, it's the whole, like, cycle of 90s nostalgia that Nickelodeon has right now. I mean, they're like... for better or worse, that is something they're really riding on. Yeah, I mean, like, they're, uh, you know, doing a Rocker's Modern Life movie, I hear, they're 
rebooting Invader Zim, which is yeah, the movie. Yeah, for They've been talking so about excited. rebooting that forever. They're, they're like doing like all the stuff. People yeah, are storyboarding there was it. A, there was a new, newish book that came out actually for Invaders. And that was hysterical, by the way, if you come across it in a bookstore. Even just look at the cover on what the is back. It I forget what it's called. It's a graphic novel, though. It's a hardback okay. graphic novel. And the back of it has nutrition facts on it, but it's like <laughs> Invader Zim nutrition facts. So it says stuff like sugar, like, you know, sugar content. I was like, oh, boy, I hope so. And, like, stuff like that. <laughs> like, it's crazy. That sounds really great. Well, yeah, yeah. that's a whole thing that's happening. Um, not just nostalgia. Yeah. Uh, so they're doing this whole thing, and I think, you know... They might ride it, like, into the ground until, like, we get to 2000s nostalgia. They might, you know, make a new hair on the <laughs> They might reboot uh, Doug if they ever buy it back from Disney, but still yeah. no problem. God, please They might, no. like, do a whole bunch of things. I, I don't know. Uh, I, it's like, yay us, yay fan service, but also... If this the, the better point should be if you do nice nostalgia, take what worked in the nineties, apply it to today. Do yourself the favor. You know what worked. Come back to that. Don't give us uh, just a remake of what it was. Put that to the put that to new properties. Like no, yeah, I mean one of the big issues is I think like the tone of the nineties, obviously like a very specific like like kind of like mm-hmm. you said right like there was um, New York stopped being like a crap hole basically um in like the giuliani period and was starting to like become a place that people felt safe in again and that sort of thing so it was like this was kind of caught right on the beginning of of living in cities becoming a thing again and people you know getting super like hip about moving to to the city and that sort of thing so it's like not necessarily like like so yeah like take hey arnold if you want it but do that like apply it by to you know today today's standards which would unfortunately probably be like you know like nazi protests or something but, cell like, phones yeah. and Wi-Fi. but yeah cell phones <laughs> and wi-fi like right there like you already have that bit and it was used in the plot like they and used it makes the sense. wi-fi and the yeah. cell phones and the fact that the beepers were super outdated and they made it work for for today's um, climate of, of technology and that sort of thing. So, like, if you keep doing things like that, like, I think it could work really well to say, you know, this was the context of the 90s and this is why you liked it then. Here's maybe why, you know, you you could still go back and, and really enjoy it now. So. Yeah. Uh, That's a good could, point. Uh, yeah. I was wondering, actually, can we get back to the, can we, can we get back to the plot thing? Because I actually have I one about comment about that. <laughs> yeah. Get back I, I, to I the think, plot. I think we made a nice little circle of this so we can get back to the plot. What did you want to say about the plot, John? Um, I have to say, if I, well, for, I do want to like the plot. I have one critique, and that has to do with La Sombra. You only have I, one. No, 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 no. <laughs> like, I've got, I've got others. I mentioned a lot of the others already, but my critique of La Sombra was, I felt like he was very thin as a villain. Like and then it was I, obvious from the beginning that he was Lasandra. Oh my god! No, I didn't yes. know Mel. Jeez, I was I was shocked. I did. Oh no! <laughs> I, I honestly Sam was oh. shook. It. Quite honestly. No, I, I picked up on that right away. I was like, this guy's bad news. I I didn't think he was Lasandra though. I thought he was just Eduardo who's gone like maybe a little crazy or whatever. But yeah, I I didn't notice that. But what I was gonna say though was like, I have a bit of a peeve whenever a villain says I'm evil and I'm a villain. I'm like. No, C- give us like, what's your motive? What's your reason for existence? Like, in the first Hey Arnold movie, the villain was Von Scheck, and he had a motive. He was trying to rectify a, a historical moment where his family was embarrassed. That's a motive. What's the Sombra's motive? I steal things. It's about Lots the- gold. Yeah, it's like that's the most basic motive you can have, and he calls himself evil. It's like, no, I thought. It's like kids animation has advanced so far in since the last episode of this show came out that you do not <laughs> that you do not need a villain to say he's a villain. Like we should be able to infer that through their actions. He should have a reason for it and there should be a conflict. It just I just didn't was not a fan of him as a villain. Mhm. I I think that's fair and I would also like to point out a lot of like Evil people tend to not see themselves legitimately as villains. They always think they have a great reason for doing what they do, even and, if it's very morally questionable to the, an outside per- observer. 
and, he, and the viewer could look at it and go, okay, well, yeah, I get it, but this is the wrong way of going about it. This one's like, there is no sympathy. He's like, no, I know. I know I'm evil. I want more gold, yo. And more rare animals. Yeah, my wife for a password is you monster. Yeah. Oh my god, I found that hysterical. I actually liked that a lot, yeah. Because yeah, that was good. Like, oh, Change the password down. to the other one. Write, it, write down it down this, this time. time. Like, how <laughs> real was that? It was so good. That was funny. Yeah, I definitely agree that La Sombra was pretty paper thin. Admittedly, in the journal episode where like he makes a brief little blip, he was like, mm, "What's this weird guy just like hunting the green eyes? Like, what's the point? Why do you want to do that? I mean, do you want to like expose our culture? Do you want to like colonize them? Like, what do you want to do? Who but knows?" The thing, but the thing there though was is that it was very it was obscured. It was in sh- it was very obscured. He was in shadow. You didn't get a good look of him. You could your mind the viewer's mind could run with that here. It, just no. Here he's, he's just kidnapping the, a bunch of kids. He's not the real villain of the movie. Arnold's oh, lack of knowledge. For <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, no. I mean, he was whatever. He was like comic relief that was actually a real obstacle sometimes, but that's all he was. Like he was literally just a, a inanimate obstacle, basically. Like you could replace him with like. A lamp. What is that? Yeah, I was gonna say you could the replace him with test. a lamp. You could do yeah. the lamp test with him, and Sexy everything, lamp. everything yeah. would be exactly the same. <laughs> I will say I was very confused by when Eduardo did show up, and he's like, "Oh yeah, those like scary people in your boat. That was me. Like those people throwing grappling hooks and just like boarding with swords in their hands. That was our people. Also, that made like, no sense at all. How long was he standing there to throw the rope down when he did? Like, yeah, did you he's watch like, oh, it all this and looks then interesting. Decide? Yeah, what the heck? <laughs> like, oh, I gotta put these kids near death and then save them. <laughs> have to make like, a grand entrance so or the grandkids. He's so calm when he pulled them up. He was like, oh, how are you? And I was like, what? Yeah, it's like, what? How long have you been there? Yeah, um, I have questions about him. Hi, Dave. That was the, the classic, um, high beams urban, urban legend story from, um, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, where she gets chased down by this scary-looking trucker, but it turns out the trucker was trying to protect her oh, from, yeah, from the, the guy in the back in the seat. Yeah. Like, yeah. That, was, that was totally what that was. But I guess. less effective. <laughs> Never read but it. But why did he leave in such a hurry? Like, is the implication that, like, the other dude was after him? Or, like, what? Because he was impersonating him, but it's not like he captured the actual Eduardo. He was just, like, hanging out somewhere, so why yeah. did he leave in such a hurry? No, he like, was, I thought no, he kidnapped Eduardo was, him. Eduardo was kidnapped, but he escaped. He did mention that. Okay. Yeah. One plot hole solved. Yay. There's a lot in this movie that, like, <laughs> is mentioned in a one-off line that a lot of... We all seem to have pieces of the plot. Yeah, that's true. And together, we can... We can... <laughs> Make a whole, we can put together a whole what plot. happened, but separately we're just not. Yeah, he made sure. It, it was like he, he said it. It was like I was kidnapped, but then I escaped, and then I tried to get back to get. I tried to get back to before you guys got on. Before you kids got on the boat, I missed the boat, so I got in my boat and tried to chase you, and that was us with the grappling hooks. So then I followed you on foot up until this point. It was all in like two set two minutes. That reminds me of Abner's little excursion. Oh, oh my, my god! god. I like loved back. and hated it at the same time. I forgot he left until he showed what back was... up at the house, and I was like, "Oh yeah. right, like he jumped." Some pig. What was up with that snake too? Like, are yeah, they what... bros? Are they dating? Like, what's going on there? He couldn't go <laughs> yeah. up to first class with him. Why not? At first, I thought the snake was like chasing him and was like yeah. an antagonist, and then I realized the snake was just like chilling with him. <laughs> So I don't. That part Chip. was strange. It Chip. was strange. I kind of liked it. The whole thing, like with Abner, even like getting on the plane, is just like you know, just irks my uh, logic senses so much. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, <laughs> he got first class. I know no. he got shrimp cocktail. I'm talking about like him just getting like sm- smuggled into San Lorenzo via like the plane that Arnold. <laughs> Like, who yeah, let that happen? Care about oh, yeah, the pig. they were gonna let him have the uh, the hand carved blow dart. Yeah, but they how did the they pig. get a stapler through security? I don't I know. I thought about that too. When I when yeah. he gave him the stapler at first, I thought he was trying to make it so he couldn't get through security. They're <laughs> <laughs> like, not gonna let a stapler us. through security. Are you kidding Apparently me? They did. Proof of concept later when Helga uses it to like smash the guard in the head. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and also like this Abner got 
first class, but the snake didn't. Wow. Discrimination. Abner's better yeah. at talking to people. He sweet talked yeah. his way up there. I thought that was interesting, like that that they put the snake in coach. Yeah. Also, <laughs> Watching Abner. Abner. Yeah, that's you yeah. know that's like a thing though. People sometimes do. Like Does I know people who have chickens. Bacon? Who? F- well, not necessarily that, but I know people who have chickens who feed their chickens chicken. Oh boy, that's like mm. it's very it's considered very inhumane and obvious for obvious reasons, and yeah, you probably shouldn't do it. Um, but yeah, no, that was that was that was messed up. <laughs> so, hey, Arnold supports uh, cannibalism, apparently. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, let's see. So we're gonna start to wrap things up. Are there any other little plot nuggets? Um, confirmation of the boyfriend. Did we talk about that yet? Yay! No. Oh yeah, yeah, Mr. Simmons. His Mr. Simmons boyfriend, slash husband slash whatever um, man person. His 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 gentleman friend uh, showed yeah. up at the airport to wish him goodbye. Peter. Yeah, Aww. it was uh, Mel uh, described it to me earlier because I missed it the first time around, and I was prepared to launch like a rant, like because <laughs> they said, said that they were gonna confirm it. I but, sent uh, you a message. I was like, "Oh, confirm the teacher's gay," and you're like, "What? <laughs> <laughs> Where did are that you, happen? What are you talking about?" And then um, I was like, "Yeah, it's a very much like blink and you miss a moment. Like when uh, they're all like saying goodbye when all the kids and Mr. Simmons are going on the plane to San Lorenzo. There is Peter, the boyfriend from the Thanksgiving episode, hugging him goodbye. Yeah. So hashtag confirmed. I guess. Yay. Yeah, it's uh. Yeah. Yep, that happened. And uh, what was the other? Pl- oh yeah, another plot nugget. We got the last name. Oh yeah, we did. Shortman. Shortman. <laughs> it's official. Well, I thought that was a thing though. Like I thought, was that just like a fan thing that I had been no. convinced was real? Yeah, yeah it was, never, it, it like, was that... real. They just never really mentioned it. So in, it in, like... I thought that was, I thought that was already established. In show, it was never mentioned, but I yeah. think yeah. in some interview or thread or whatever, it was revealed. But this is like the first time it's been like officially in show official. Yeah, Arnold yeah, Schwarzenegger. Sure, sure, man. It was. Uh, I, I did kind of. I did kind of like it though when he said, "Now fill out the passport with your full name as it appears in your birth certificate." <laughs> crowd, <laughs> and the crowd leads in. Arnold Shortman. Short we got man. it. <laughs> I would feel weird about my grandpa calling me by our last name, but like, whatever. <laughs> well, it's his too. Yeah, exactly. He was gonna like, say, yeah, was Grandpa too. Shortman. Like, if my grandpa started calling me Quattro, I would feel really weird about it. But, you know, I'm not <laughs> Arnold, so well, whatever. Well, 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 it worked. It was, like, Shortman and Short Man. So it's the biggest and thing. Arnold's short. Oh, yeah. yeah, at least for now. He's so. be tiny. Yeah. Um, also, I wanted to mention, you can tell, I think we mentioned it earlier, a lot of the kids are going through puberty. Especially, oh, like, yeah. Helga. Helga is, like, you know, a head taller than Arnold right now. She always was, though. Yeah, she's always she been tall, but she's got like... breast bump that's very, like, okay. I, I did notice that. Some... Yeah, I, it was distracting at first, and then I was just like, okay, this is all right. Play. Girl? Going into sixth grade, it's about the time, okay. Yeah, it was the time yeah. for me. Mm-hmm. Me too. Me too. <laughs> let's all talk about when we... <laughs> no, let's... <laughs> Puberty! Uh... Um... Yeah, he had to like step on his tippy toes to to get up he there. He did. That was And then it was funny because she, she kind of bent over. Toes yeah, she had to bent over too. I thought that was really sweet. Yeah, she yeah. had the like pop thing. Uh, I didn't think that was so sweet, but I thought like they, you know, I hate that. Her. That is the number one motif that annoys the hell out of me. Is when they wow, you didn't like the Princess Diaries, Mel? <laughs> I was gonna say. Listen, Princess Diaries worked it in. She like very much inorganically wanted it to happen. Like, and that's fine, because whatever, she was a teenager, like, I get that. Here, it's like, okay, come now. Stop it. Yeah, help, help go in that leg pop, though. Leg pop and good time. Yikes. <laughs> Alright, uh, anything else that you guys want to talk about? Um, maybe in, Ger- or in Gerald? I don't know. Does anyone have thoughts? Yeah, 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 yeah. he got a cheek smooch. That's exciting. Aww. Love it. The official confirmed hashtag yeah. handhold in love. Great. They've been a supposed thing for a while, so I'm glad that that okay. was finally confirmed too. That was kind of is gonna be lit. 
<laughs> yeah, sixth grade is going to be a fun time. The sixth grade dance is going to be great. Oh, yeah. Question is, do, do, does Helga go with Arnold? Hmm. I don't know. He asks her and she says no, but like, but then still she meets they... him there and looks awesome. Yeah, but they're like together anyway. Like, yeah. it's just, she needs her independence to go there separately. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's one last thing I wanted to bring up. The, uh, new slash older voice actors. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, most notably, Francesca Murray Smith as Helga. She's like 30 something now. She's perfect. Her voice sounds the same. It does sound the same, but you can tell that she's aged and it's kind of distracting for me. But, you know, I can't, like, be about it. You know, I love it. It's great. She's, yeah. You know, she still pulled it off, and she can't really, yeah, and I guess, yeah, Arnold and Gerald were different, but then again, Arnold had, like, seven voice actors. Yeah, so like, like that, that's that, true, it doesn't really matter, Arnold's had a bajillion. Well, it's like, yeah, because back, you have to remember, back in the day, they used child voice actors for these roles more often, and they would just switch them out every now and then, if they didn't quick get the adults. It was really, I think, only Adventure Time really sort of ke- had a child voice actor, kept them on, and built a plot around that. Yeah, true. Mm-hmm. Which is, um, which is, which is unique, cause usually they wouldn't do that. They would have, like, if Adventure Time had been made in the 90s, Finn would have had, like, 12 by now. Oh, yeah. Cause he would have been perpetually, like, 13 or something. Let's see, who else? Um, Phoebe had the same voice, I think. Andy McAfee. Uh, a couple of notable voice changes. Um, the voice of Oscar, uh, was he died. <laughs> Oh. Which isn't funny. It's uh, Steve uh, Dixon. He was also like a writer, you know, main guy behind the scenes, and he passed away in like 2014 or so. Uh, so, you know, RIP to him. Uh, who else? Uh, Gerald obviously changed. Uh, Stinky, Sid, you know, all the oh, yeah. minor characters, right? Uh, Olivia Hack back as Rhonda, which, you know, she sounds exactly the same. Yes, yeah, she does <laughs> oh, sound yeah. the same. Definitely. That's good. Uh, and, you know, of course, Dan Butler as Mr. Simmons. Uh, Old Dog Briscoe from Frasier. And I now know that because I'm binging Frasier. Which... Was Gramps the same? Yeah. And um, Grandma? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Dan Castanola. Dan Castanola. Dan Castanola. Homer Simpson. <laughs> As Grandpa and uh, Trust yes. as Well, that's grandma. awesome. Trust I knew Miguel, AKA did Dot, AKA Dot Warner, AKA the uh, the water bending puppet woman in an Avatar. Yeah, she was that one. Oh she? wow, she's had a fun career. Oh yeah, like that, those two have been like those two are definitely in that sort of upper tier of of great voice actors who are in everything. They also got Alfred Molina for uh, La Sombra. Apparently. Oh, oh that's wow. who that was. I guess. <laughs> that's I pretty know. sick. Good was for he him. Also, well, good he... for them to get him. Yeah. Was he also... Good for them. Or no. Hmm? Was he also Eduardo or no? No, Eduardo was uh, Carlos Alzraki. Oh. Yeah, cause, oh, yeah, he's got... I think he's got some... Cre- he has got credits as well. Uh, who else? And then special cameos, if, like, you don't have ears, you would miss it. <laughs> Uh, Lane Torrin as Shay and Jamil Walker Smith as Paulo, who are like crew members. Uh, Lane Torrin was the first voice of Arnold in season one. And also he voiced Wolfgang, fun fact. Uh, Jamil yeah. Walker Smith was the voice of Gerald. Uh, I literally do not think that Lane Torrin had a line that made it because I did not hear him at all. And, uh, Jamil Walker Smith just said, hey. <laughs> Wow. Hey. So um, there you yeah, go. His parents waking up and saying, "Hey, Arnold." Like, come on. That was weird. <laughs> like, who would do that? You they think would. there would be a? You think they'd be a little more shocked that their son was standing right there? Oh, hey. Yeah. Arnold. Also, you knew it was him the last time you saw him. He was like a baby. A baby. Like, like don't tell nobody... me you'd, audit, you'd wake up from it's a nine-year coma. And yeah, then you, then you never forget that know. football head. It's that, it's that football head tipped him off. Just also, like, all like the, giving all the birth to that people. must have, like, really been naturally. Aww, it was like... yeah. yeah. On and that it, note. And you think the second question <laughs> would have been, how long were we asleep? And the second question should have been, how long have we been asleep? Yeah, they probably how old are you? Oh. Yeah. Now they do. Yeah, you look pretty old. Their ten-year-old son is just standing in front of them. You have a mortgage. And what is what? And what is this Wi-Fi everyone's talking about? I don't know. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that'll be a fun thing too. They could like play with yeah. Yeah. introducing them to modern technology. Yeah, screen. explore Wi-Fi in the new Hey Arnold. There you go. It'll actually be like an interactive experience on YouTube. The new Hey Arnold season. Oh. I know we're just gonna like play as uh 
Miles and Stella, and we're going to go through an adventure of them figuring out what Wi-Fi is. It's going to be great. <laughs> anyway. Bob Bob tries to sell them beepers because he tries to make them like think oh, beepers are still a thing. So he like... <laughs> also, I think that the Patakis are actually living inside of the beeper store now. Yeah, yeah, no. Oh, that, oh, yeah. that was That's really, really weird. Because every time they went back to the Pataki household, it was the beeper store. <laughs> and I, I don't know what it is, but for whatever reason, when they mentioned, like, we gotta save Olga, and then later it was like, oh yeah, Helga too. That felt a lot meaner than I remember those two parents being like. No, I remember them being pretty. They were pretty not pretty great. Bad. Well, they, well, they, well, you know, you knew Helga was sort of, you know, the ugly, the ugly step, the ugly child that they didn't talk about, but they still cared enough about her to not forget her if they, she was ever in danger. This one felt a little bit harsher. Mm, yeah, it was just Maybe. like you know, not even like a compassionate like feeling from even like the creators at that point. They're just like, oh yeah, Helga's parents don't even know who she is. There you go. <laughs> She's the mega. The Mega this, yeah, but we did, yeah, but it was like we did know that, but it was always, you know, it was, and obviously Helga's personality derives from the fact that she felt abandoned at home and yeah, that maybe old, the uh, the beeper business is just going so bad that <laughs> they forget him. He's they've now they they're regressing <laughs> even so more. Before Helga was Probably. born, <laughs> yeah, they're trying to go back to the last usable interface of their lives. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Oh from? God, like the reference to something. Um, Big oh, Bang Theory. No. Oh, oh. Alright, well, uh, I think that that wraps it up, don't you think? At least yeah, I hope yeah. it does. Uh, so, you can find out <laughs> all the info on this podcast at overlyanimated.com. Join us on Discord to text chat about animation at overlyanimated.com slash Discord. I personally love the Discord. Everybody should talk there. Oh my god. It's great. Mel, you should join. The Discord. Uh. D. Yeah, Mel, you should join the Discord. <laughs> is this like, is, is this like old D? Yeah, pretty much. <gasps> anyway, I'll, I'll talk to you about it later. <laughs> I love the Discord. The discourse. Uh, on Discord. Maybe not. Anyway, you can also. <laughs> maybe you should stay away. Mel, just so you know. <laughs> you, not you specifically, Uh-oh. but you as in the audience, can support us via Patreon at patreon.com slash overly animated. Thanks to all of our current patrons, especially our patron of the podcast, Hugh, aka Hugh Neutron. And uh-huh. thanks as always to our patron executive producers, John, Ryan, Steve, Alex, Andy, and Hugh. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Do we have any closing thoughts, feelings, sentences, etc.? But where was the hidden Zutara in this? (laughs) Oh no! Michelle, what did you say before Mel just said that? I I can't remember. That was so cracky. Um... Something about if there was a reboot, I would totally yeah. watch it. I, I think I I would probably lend my time to that, though. I don't know. We'll yeah. see. Yeah. If there is a hair on a reboot, watch me host that. I guess the podcast, not the show. <laughs> watch. <laughs> oh, oh, what? Ha- oh, what? Happy day. The the we got we've got our movie. Just thank you, Nickelodeon. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, for real. Thanks to the new Netflix for like believing in this and like. Riding the coattails of capitalism, et cetera, to make us watch this. But you know, it's all said and done. It's like, so what were, you, what were you doing for the last 15 years? I hope you weren't wasting your life. Eh, I kind of was, but <laughs> oh well. I think for other, for other reasons. Yeah, I definitely, I, was doing. I, de- I definitely was too. Anyway, I think we're good. Again. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're good, good again. again. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye. Au revoir. Bye. Take care.